What's going on, peeps? Corridor Digital released a video specifically focused on lightsabers and how they've progressed with technology and how they can depict the lightsaber in film over the years. Ooh. So I wanted to quickly show from one of my former channels from when I was in high school how deeply interested I was when like the Ryan vs. Dorkman video came out and stuff like that. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, look at all these people using their computers to make lightsabers. I want to do that too. So I went and I got a broomstick and I made a very, very short clip of me rotoscoping because it takes hours to move this little block frame by frame and make it look good with the varying motion and the feathering of the colors and uh I loved it though people told me that to give the illusion of motion that I should try to fan it out but it just looks terrible <laughs> it just like bunches in random places boy oh boy did I try look at my friggin young ass I have to be like 14 there I don't look 14 I'm pretty tall yeah I was just a big kid <laughs> so now 50 years of lightsabers so this week we are filming a short called Lightsabers for Men. I was arrested at Disneyland! It's also an excuse to do like 20 <laughs> different silly lightsaber effects. So Josh, myself, and Matt are going to be sitting down and spending this week cranking on lightsabers and trying to make them look cool. But lightsabers have been around for a long time and wow. there's a lot of different ways to do lightsabers. So first things first, I want to talk to you a little bit about lightsaber history. So gentlemen, I want to talk to you a little bit about lightsabers, specifically lightsaber history. Uh -huh. Star has been around since the 1970s, which puts it at about 43 years old or so, 44. I think I don't remember much of Star Wars. The only time I've watched Star Wars was when I was 12 years old, and I haven't watched it since. I, I, Why? I didn't think they were that great, to be honest. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but lightsabers have been around for a long time, and there's a lot of different ways to do lightsabers. So first things first, let's take a look at the original A New Hope with the very first shot of the lightsaber, and I want to hear your guys' take on how you think they did it. I know they do the jump cut, but it's they put they had to put a, re a reflective pull into the hilt, and the light being cast from the set would cause it to reflect, and then I'm pretty sure they had to hand paint it. How do you think they did it? They didn't well, first, you gotta get the crystal. <laughs> uh, I can see the hidden cut, and like, this lightsaber comes out, you can see the cut there, but how they actually did it, I'm not 100% sure. I know that there's a cut here, so I know that something had to be replaced, because right. there would be no use for a jump cut. And that's when they put the light post in. Unless there was some sort of swap of the lightsaber, right, for the effect. There's some bar of light possibly like a retro reflective thing. Uh, Matt, you got it right. The very first Star Wars, the way they did it is they had a rod with a retro reflective material on it. Basically the, the same thing you'd see in like safety vests or on like street signs. So now it's spin. And when that would spin, it gives you like the warble and the flicker and that kind of stuff. Oh. The thing about retro reflective materials, it's only gonna reflect light if the light is right by your eyes or your camera lens. So they had to have lights blasting from right next to the camera lens. Whoa. Oh. Oh. So that does work. Non-reflective. Here's reflective. Yeah. And so you're saying that all cool. of this is practical, though? Well, here's the thing. We it's hard to see the original lightsabers these days. The original Star Wars has been like erased from the internet and the <laughs> world. There's like six versions of the original Star Wars, and they're all a little different. The spinning retroreflective material, they got rid of that. So what was the next thing? How do you think they did the next set of lightsabers in Empire Strikes Back? Okay, so this is the painting then. So the, the original was just the straight up light post, but in later editions, then they did the technological painting, I guess, to add blue color. At this point, it would be like, I don't know. Are we, are we talking something where it's like they're, they're actually painting on, on the film now? They are doing rotoscopes. They are doing rotoscopes. So they literally had an artist go in there, project them frame by frame, and then paint where the lightsabers were with like black paint and you can do a mask with that that they're then using to shine light through onto the film, giving you actual exposed film as if somebody was actually shining a light there mm -hmm. and giving you actual glow that's causing the light passing through a real lens, diffusing through actual film. It's also the same way they did the lasers. So that takes us nice. to Phantom Menace. How do you guys think that the lightsabers were the Phantom Menace? Uh, 
pure rotoscoping on computers the way I did it with much more professionalism and finesse. I think they must have went frame by frame, like kind of, that's when they had computers, I'm guessing, right? <laughs> 99? <laughs> the Matrix came out in 99, Josh. The lightsabers and the oh. prequels are about as basic as they come when it comes to visual effects. They used to be incredibly difficult, and now they're quite possibly the easiest VFX shot you can do. But in the early days of digital VFX, lightsabers were a super monotonous task because you'd have to be in Photoshop or something and you'd have to do it with shape layers and masks. I just got goosebumps from the number of times that I've watched Ryan vs. Dorkman in envy of editing skill. And they made me so badly want to get into special effects in movies. And go through and you'd have to move all four corners of this rectangular mask frame by frame by frame by frame. And you would have to actually calculate in the motion blur. That's something people don't really realize about lightsabers is when you swing them, you don't get a blade. You end up with... See? So I tried to mimic that in my own edit. <laughs> giant fan. But thanks to Video Copilot's Saber, which is a free plugin for After Effects, wow. lightsabers have never been easier. The lightsabers and the prequels are very plain compared to like what lightsabers look like in current movies and what they look like back in the old movies. It's a great way of getting it done. You know, it's a, it's a glowing rod for sure, but you lose out on a bunch of flicker and a bunch of form. And also because the glow is all done in post, you don't get the really crazy organic blur that you get from actual light effects. Like it's not actually passing through lenses. Right. Then if we go and we look at the most current version, now you're getting Disney money put Disney into your lightsabers. Money, yeah. And it's no longer a two-dimensional effect. And it's this three-dimensional bar. I don't like how tight it is. There should be more glow, in my opinion. But I guess they're saying, oh, well, there is. Ours is just finer and more detailed. You're actually getting 3D tracked shapes with like, you know, fuzzes on the edge. There's shape and dimension there. And another interesting effect is that motion blur. Motion blurring an object is like lowering the exposure on it. The faster something moves, the less time it has to shoot photons from the position it's in. So if you have a really bright light and you streak the light really fast, you're gonna get a dimmer streak than as if you just kept the light in one spot. Now back right. in the day when they had lightsabers and they're swinging them around, it's just one white wash, right? The exposure doesn't change at all. But if you look at the lightsabers from the new Star Wars films, you notice at the tips, this, the color starts coming down, the white starts to go away and you start to get color coming in at the tip of the lightsaber. Whereas the center starts to stay, stays really glowy. You know, simulations trying to basically act like what would happen if we actually filmed this for real? What are all the steps that would happen? to those photons on their way to the camera. There's one other thing mm. we're doing, and this is subtle. Because we live in the future, and we've invented LEDs, which did not exist back when they filmed the original Star Wars, we can now put lights in the lightsaber props. Right. And so we have lightsabers that actually cast light on the talent. In all the other Star Wars films, except for maybe some of the prequels, you don't have that. They couldn't do anything like that. They'd have to draw it in by hand or, you know, simulate it. So knowing what you guys do about this process now, and you know, all these different ways you can make lightsabers, I'll pose you a question. How would you make a brown lightsaber? A brown lightsaber. Let's think about that for a second. How did they do the saber for the Mandalorian, the black blade? George Lucas is like, look, it's my dying wish to have a brown lightsaber in Star Wars, and it has to look good. And you're like, uh, the brown's kind of a darker color, and he's like, yeah, figure it out. What do you do? We should just shine some lights in front of some turds and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, because the problem that you have to deal with is like, Yeah, see, that's exactly what I thought of. Getting into weird colors is that like, A, the core of the lightsaber might not necessarily be white, and the only reason it's white is because it's so bright that the camera can't expose it. Like, in reality, you should be able to expose the camera down and the core would actually just become the color of the lightsaber. How do you glow with something that's not a bright color? Because a glow has to be a certain color. If I'm shining, like, a bright blue flashlight and the light is so bright that it's white, well, the fringe has to be, like, a really saturated blue. Because that's what's happening is you're pulling down the exposure from that. But you can't, like, go to a, like, oh, I'm shining a bright brown light and then the glow is brown. Mm -hmm. Or a black light and the glow is black. It would probably have to be some elements of orange and yellow that are subtle but more prominent than the blade itself to give a glow effect. But it would probably look very awkward and need some extra layering of something to distract from how plain it looks. What does a camouflage lightsaber look like? Oh, I want to find out what a camo lightsaber <laughs> looks like. What does a bacon lightsaber look like? Are we going to do a lightsaber with like a bunch of bacon like wrapped around it? Like a, <laughs> is the bacon lightsaber a like a bacon dog situation or is it the bacon itself? 
that's the problem we're going to try to solve with this video. I'm going to try oh to do God. lightsaber colors that you've never seen before. Tactical olive green, jet black, blaze orange for hunting safety, woodland camo, tactical tan, leather. What I'm talking about is lightsabers for men. Now you're just like, this little boys, Padawans, real men don't carry red lightsabers. Red is just dark pink, and pink is for little girls. This video which we're going to shoot tomorrow is basically, imagine, like, you know, those, like, soap for men commercials that you see? <laughs> They're still using whatever bar their mommy bought for her little man. Basically, I get these ads on Instagram all the time. Dude, do you shop at betterbeard.com? The same deal. Super obnoxious. So, this is the same vibe. So it starts... Oh, well, honestly, that soap, it is better. <laughs> 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 My mom gave me some, and I was like, this is kind of cringy. No. And I was like... That's great. <laughs> I'm talking about natural, nourishing, cold press hand cut soap. More! More! Good. The great outdoors. I f hate LA. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like this place sucks. My my character motivation is that I'm very insecure. Someone made fun of my purple lightsaber, and so I started this company to prove to them. That I'm, I'm not a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Just Yikes. slap a lens on a potato and let's get this shoot started. Real men don't give a shit about camera settings. <laughs> All right, you guys set? Yep. Hey man, listen up. Are you tired of these pussy ass lightsaber colors like baby blue and purple? <laughs> <laughs> you! <laughs> Buy my. Look at these lightsabers. When I was a young child, I bought a purple lightsaber. <laughs> And everyone made fun of me for years to the point where I had to leave school and I was expelled. I went to a great depression and I started this company. I won't stop making bad jokes until one of them is good. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> we got deluxe models. Our lightsabers are two inches longer and extra girthy for that thick slice. My facial fix artists are gonna be on overtime tonight. <laughs> yeah. You wanna see how cool Jedi turns on his lightsaber? <laughs> <laughs> And introducing our stealth saber. It's invisible. Oh. This one's invisible. Watch out! It's very, very dangerous. Okay, cool, guys. That's a wrap. Wrap. Yeah. Congratulations. That's a wrap. So we've explained to you how they did all different style of lightsaber effects. What about something like impossible, like a black lightsaber, right? Now I'm sure you've heard of like a dark saber or the black yeah. lightsabers. Um, you know, it's a common thing in the fringe Star Wars canon. To make a black lightsaber is going to require us to do a very different technique than how they've done lightsaber effects. In order to have darkness, you must have light. In order to have peace, you must have war. <laughs> so in order to make this black lightsaber feel dark, I need to actually have a glowing fringe around the outside that's very subtly right. raising the brightness around it so that that darkness feels extra dark. So I can go through and little by little, I can add these dark fringes. Now the thing that makes this special, and it's not just your average black fuzz, I'm going to put on a mode called soft light. And it's going to take the colors underneath and it's going to raise their saturation as it lowers the brightness. It's a pretty cool effect and it really gives this feeling of like a burned film that feels like it's sucking the light out. What about that white halo we were talking cool. about? Well, I actually have that here. And it raises the brightness around that dark saber to make the dark saber feel darker. And that's how I made a shadow saber, a charcoal black lightsaber, as a manly Sam would say. Today, I'm doing the camo saber. When you think of a camo lightsaber, uh, at first it's like, oh, well, it's just a lightsaber with camo patterns, right? It's easy. When you actually sit down and try to do it, the issue that you immediately are faced with is the fact that camo is not a bright pattern. And inherent- Nor is it dynamic. Because to make the saber feel like it's coming to life, that camo would probably have to be dynamically moving up and down the saber in some way. Apparently a lightsaber is a very bright source of light. It's a very hot object. We have to right away sell the audience on the fact that this is a camo saber. We started off with this simple camo pattern here. It's a JPEG that I got on the internet. Thank you, the internet. I started with a simple wave warp so that it kind of gives it a little bit of like a free flowing fluid motion to it. The thing is, okay. lightsabers are cylindrical. So the next step, CC cylinder. I gave it a slight rotation so that it kind of looks like it's swirling. We have this camo pattern that swirls around a stick 
That doesn't look like a lightsaber, that just looks like a, a tube of like camo wrapping paper. We needed to make this look like energy, like there's an energy source. I did a very simple Luma mat onto our Sabre plugin, which we've been using liberally throughout this project. So the Sabre gives us these nice edges, this sort of like energy emitting edge. That's all well and good, but still kind of looks like a uh, hot butt trash. How do we make this glow? Well, you just pre-comp all this stuff. You bring it into our main comp here, and then we're just like stacking glow layers behind this uh, this main source of uh, our camo pattern. And yeah, I think we have an effect here that sells as camo right away, while also feeling like a lightsaber at the same time. I think I think we've done it. We wow. finally made a camo lightsaber. So what Nico asked me to do, Ashley, is uh, he asked me to make a lightsaber with hair on it. I'm not too sure why, but that's kind of <laughs> what visual effects is. You just kind of do stuff you're told to. So the hilt is the normal hilt, but then it's just a bare pelt. Pretty much the first thing I did was I modeled a, like a rough lightsaber kind of thing, and I just like hand tracked it to match the movement of the red lightsaber as best I can. And then from the cylinder, I can just spawn hair. So I spawned some more like clunky, like chunky kind of hair, and then I had another pass of just like more loose kind of hair on the top. And this this kind of makes an overall like layered hair instead of just one kind of like uniform look to it. Octane mm. has these great like hair materials that you can just kind of fool around with and like make it so it's a little bit more wet looking or like has different color variations in between it. So I was able to make this like hair lightsaber that just kind of wishes around and like moves around when he moves this thing. It's got all dynamics and everything. The hardest thing I think was to light the scene because when we filmed Sam here, you can see that he's like half of him is lit and then half of him's got like light like reaching through kind of like light through a tree kind of thing. And like to light it, I was able to use like an octane light and then like have a texture in it and then it like projects like patches of light and then it also keeps it in shadows. The hot spots are what make this like stand out that much more. Pretty much turned out amazing in my opinion. For the second one, Nico wanted me to do a bacon lightsaber. I found a texture online of just a long bacon strip and then from there I was just able to add some bones to it and just add like a simple dynamic sim to the bones. You track it to the lightsaber and then just go fool around with the dynamics. It just has the initial wiggle and then it folds onto itself and that's how I got the bacon to look. <laughs> the most realistic in my opinion. There's some other really funny weird lightsabers. I have a Call of Duty brown, aka Desert Tan, Blaze Orange. We have a chrome lightsaber. We have a gun that's actually lightsaber and don't forget what? you can see all these lightsabers you can see this whole video on the corridor channel youtube.com slash corridor it's out Hello. right now just go watch it we haven't put a video Here on corridor in like a year so it was like oh i didn't know they have a main channel <laughs> corridor is still around it's still kicking Josh has an Instagram called Just Josh, and it is super cool. Josh has been learning how to use a bunch of really advanced programs like Houdini to do really cool little visual effects magic tricks. You should definitely check out his Instagram. I'll we'll have a link down in the description below. Nice. Uh -huh. So I don't understand. They have corridor crew, but there's also corridor. Wow. Okay. Well, now I feel silly. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I love Star Wars. The lightsaber is just the iconic Star Wars item prop. I honestly feel inspired to try and dip my toes back into this, but the software these days, Adobe subscription-based, uh, maybe someday down the line. Thanks guys. Peace and love to my ladies and bros. May the force be with you, always.